Weekly Outdoor Plus, a new and exciting outdoor show right here on Fox 55 WFXS, every Sunday from 10.30 to 11 a.m., presented by Bucks and Bulls Archery in Stevens Point, Wisconsin, starring new owner Gary Hintz, his youngest son, the show pro, Jace Hintz, and the show producer, creator, and host, his oldest son, Seth Hintz. Now sit back and get ready to learn about archery and the world of the outdoors. This week we open up welcoming back Chef Thad from Michelle's restaurant, and this time we're working with Walleye. I'm gonna show you a little a flaying method that I've used for years. And, um, and I use it when I'm out fishing myself. I also do it when we get whole fish at the restaurant. Uh, believe it or not, I, I firmly believe that one of the best fillet knives on the market is the one you've seen since you were a young man or, or woman. It's the Rapala fillet knife. I use this size as well as this. I think it's seven and four inch, the blades. Um, for what they cost and how easy they are to sharpen and, and redefine your edge, it's the knife of choice for us. A lot of people forget about what I call the shoulder meat. It's right behind the head, so I start my angle cut I follow a line about like this, trying to get as much of that meat as I can from just behind the head. I run right past the pectoral fin and down to the body like that. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. As you know, scales on the fish are work their way from front to back. So when you start your cut with a knife, you want to go follow the scales. So rather than cut through them, you're going to cut on an angle towards where they originate from. That way you're not cutting through the scale, actually you're just cutting through the skin. When I get to this point, I can feel the spine. I'm going to turn my knife and I'm going to run that knife right along the edge of the spine, past the dorsal fin. And when I get to the second fin, I, I'm not sure the name of that fin, but this tells me on a walleye that I'm in line with the anal pore. So I'm going to drive that knife straight through. I'm still on the right side of the spine. I'm going to go through to there and I'm going to run the knife, still following the spine, all the way to the back edge. I'm going to leave it attached there and I'm going to show you why in just a little bit, okay? So I don't go all the way through to the end, I keep a little bit attached there. I'm going to come back at this fish, running the knife, using the tip of the fillet knife, around the rib cage. I'll turn the, the knife in a, I like to run the knife from front to back as much as I can, so I'll turn the fish so I can do that. I've still got it attached to the belly here, okay? I'm gonna leave it like that and I'm gonna flip the fish over. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Find the spine, run the knife along the spine till I get to the back fin that tells me I'm towards the butt. And um, I'm gonna run the knife all the way back until I get to the very end, but not going through. I'm gonna come back at it. I'm gonna fillet this way, following the spine down. If you hear your, the knife, Catching the edge of the bones, that's okay. That tells you you're making a good clean cut. You just don't want to go through them. I'm going to go once again around the rib cage. When I get to the bottom of the rib cage, you can cut through. That's just a real fine bone there. Now I have two halves still connected to the fish. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to lift up. I'm going to find this one section that's still attached. I'm going to drive my knife like that. I'm going to pull the guts fish away. I'm going to take my knife, I'm going to use the heel of the knife, I'm going to put it through the spine here, I'm going to bend the fish till it cracks, and then I'm going to cut through. This is all, other than one part, the cheeks for throwaway. I have my two fillets here, the reason I kept them attached is because now I can drive the knife through like that. I have something to hold on to when I skin. Put the knife here, keep your knife flat when you skin. You can. Pull the fillet towards the blade of the knife, and sometimes that works better than slicing with the knife. We have one fillet there. Beautiful fish, Scott. My goodness. I think I want to go fishing with you sometime. So we have a, a boneless, skinless fillet, and everything is still attached there. That will be garbage. The walleye fillet is not done yet. In a clean body of water, you can eat the belly belly meat. I don't know where this came from, but I'm going to be safe. I'm just going to trim away a little bit of that little silver skin that's there on the fillet. There's also another part to the fillet that on bigger walleye, say walleye that are over 16, 17 inches, 
Um, there's a little pin bone that sticks off in the rib cage. I'm going to come back at it. it. It's directly opposite the lateral line, but on the inside. I'm going to take the knife, I'm going to take, put the point straight down, and I'm going to get out that pin bone by driving it straight down on either side of V-cut. And now we have a completely boneless fillet. The head of the fish, if you ask any old timers, has probably the most flavor of that entire fish. Um, I'm guessing many of us would be a little bit uh, put out if we saw fish eyes coming on our plate. So we're just going to extract the cheek. I start from right behind the eye socket, I stick the knife straight in, and I find, I, I kind of find where it bottoms out at a bone, and then I'll do a little scoop cut, pivoting the knife and the blade of the knife all around till I get to here. Skin is still attached, I've made a flap. I'm gonna reach in with my finger, find that base of the skin, and I'm gonna pull, and I have a cheek. The skin is still there, the cheek is gone. I'll take a fish fillet right off the fish after I'm done filleting it, and I'll put it into an ice bath. Ice and water, half and half, and, and I'll get it in there as quickly as I can, and I'm going to rinse it, try to get any blood that maybe would have been left in it, and keep it as cold and firm as possible. I'll take it out of the ice bath, and as you can see, it has wonderful color. It's got that nice texture to it, and that's ready for cooking. So stay tuned as Chef Thad shows us how to turn this walleye into what he calls poor man's lobster. Coming up later on Weekly Outdoor Plus. Bucks and Bulls Archery in Stevens Point is now under new ownership and has a new location. Stop down to 3272 Church Street and meet the new owner, Gary Hanks. His fully stocked pro shop carries Matthews, Hoyt, and many more products to serve all your needs. They also do all repairs for any style and full customizations. Leagues and lessons will begin soon, so stop in today and check out what's new, because we're confident that we can get you from in here to out there. Bucks and Bulls Archery, Stevens Point, Wisconsin. It's summertime and the living's easy. If you start all your projects here at Frank's Hardware on Highway 10 in Stevens Point. From seeds to irrigation and endless lawn and garden tools, we have it all, so you can get your work done and enjoy it this summer. We also do screen repair, lawnmower blade and knife sharpening, and offer the supplies to put in your own well, including equipment rental. And while you're here, pick up your seed and sets in bulk, so you always have the right amount. So make us your lawn and garden headquarters this summer. That's Frank's Hard Rock, Highway 10 at Stevens Point. See you soon. If you're looking for a vacuum that is going to perform year in and year out, look no further. SIBO is the best of the best. Pick up your SIBO today at Barber Shop, 2400 Church Street, Stevens Point. ProWash, commercial and residential mobile power washing service will get it clean. Whether it's a house, garage, roof, patio, or deck, ProWash uses all hot water, putting them above the rest. They also use all biodegradable chemicals to get out any mold or rotting that's ruining your home. So take a large step towards protecting one of your biggest investments and have the cleanest house on the block. Call 715-341-7852 for an estimate today and ask for the Pro at ProWash. 715-341-7852. Real Deal Mineral. Deer eat it gone. Real Deal Mineral is the real deal. Other minerals on the market contain up to 70% salt. Real Deal has less than 7% salt and more of the minerals deer need to grow bigger horns. And bigger horns mean bigger trophies. I tried Real Deal Mineral for the first time and I saw bucks on camera I never knew I had. Real Deal Mineral. Available here at Bucks and Bulls Archery, Stevens Point or realdealmineral.com. Don't forget to mark your calendar, July 27th, one year anniversary grand opening here at Bucks and Bulls Archery, 3272 Church Street, new location, new owner. We have a lot of door prizes to give out. We're giving away a free craze mission bowl, bunch of door prizes. We got food, refreshments. Melissa Bachman will be here from Winchester Deadly Passion TV. She's a Matthews professional hunter. Don't forget, mark that date, July 27th, Come on in to 3272 Church Street, Stevens Point. Check us out, maybe win a door prize. Welcome to this week's lesson segment on Weekly Outdoor Plus, brought to you by Barber Shop, 2400 Church Street, Stevens Point, where they have the most wide variety of vacuums, sewing machines, and parts you can need, and great service to go along with it. 
So get your notebooks and pencils out because it's time for your lesson segment with myself, Jace Hintz, and Weekly Outdoor Plus. Hey guys, this week I'm going to be talking to you about when you pull your bow out of your case again for the first time this year. Um, you know, you get everything, make sure you got it all checked out like we talked about in the last couple episodes. Now I'm going to be talking to you about finding your anchor point. That's one thing that if you don't shoot a lot, we'll be changing year to year. Um, especially if you're younger, you're going to be growing and everything. You're going to need different draw lengths and stuff. Where this here will make it so you're going to have the consistent anchor point like you've always been aiming for, trying to get so you can shoot the most accurate as possible. Um, first thing you're going to have to do is when you pull back, you got to relax, bring your hand onto your face below your jawbone like that. Get your anchor point so your nose on the string there and close your eyes. By closing your eyes, you're going to be closing them so that when you pull back like that and you get your hand on your face, get your nose on the string, when you close your eyes, when you open them up, you're going to be able to tell right away if you're looking through your peep sight or not. If your peep sight's low or high, that's something you move, all right? Don't adjust to your peep sight because then you're going to be moving your hand on your face. You're going to be, you know, taking this, your nose off the string. You're going to be crushing it a lot more. You're going to be, you know, barely touching it. You want it to be the same all the time. So if you close your eyes, you're going to find the most comfortable position that you can and whatever you're going to come back to naturally 90% of the time. So again, we're going to pull back nice and slow. You're going to put your hand on the face nose on the string close your eyes now you're gonna open as you can see this peep sight's too low for me I'd move it up about half an inch so then what I would do is I'd move it up as high as I need it do the same thing over again pull back close your eyes see where you're at all right finding that anchor point to start off the year is gonna be huge I mean especially if you are growing or you got a new setup or you haven't shot your bow in a while you know don't make adjustments on your anchor point make your anchor point adjust for you all right make it work so it's gonna be perfect for you every single time um, again, don't be afraid to stop in. We can help you out with an extra set of eyes, figure it out, you know, see where you're at exactly. Um, helps out a lot, definitely. You're gonna need a bull press to turn your string so you can have your peep sight turning straight back for you. That's another thing, you know, if your string stretches or, you know, gets dry or really moist and wherever you're keeping it, again, it's gonna start twisting a little bit. Bring it in, we'll throw in a bull press for you. It'll take two minutes, we'll get it straightened out for you so you're shooting consistent every time. All right, as always, have a good week. Can't wait to see you next week. Aim for a Cure, an archery shoot supporting cancer research, is coming to Blackhawk Archery Club in Polonia, Wisconsin, Saturday and Sunday, August 3rd and 4th. For those of you who don't know about Blackhawk Archers, it's a local archery club just east of town here a little bit, um, by, just on Highway Z in Polonia, probably 15 minutes from town. It's an indoor-outdoor facility, one of the nicest in the state. They got an outdoor range of 20 targets, 40-yard uh, indoor range open all year round, it's a beautiful place and a good time to check it out would be August 3rd and 4th, they're having a, a 3D Dick Leapack um, memorial shoot because Dick passed away with cancer a while back and uh, now they're, this is a second annual a fundraiser, they donate every, all the proceeds go to Marshfield Clinic uh, Cancer Research. So on August 3rd and 4th, Aim for the Cure, the Dick Leapack memorial is going to be out there at Blackhawk so it would be a good time to stop in bring your bow, shoot the tournament. If you don't want to shoot, just come out there, check out the facility so you know what's out there. And uh, you can maybe eat and support the cancer research a little bit and should be a good time. If you need any more information, stop in here at Bucks and Bulls and uh, we can fill you in on what's going on. Thanks. Before experiencing it, you won't know dependability unless you've drawn it you haven't felt smooth until you shoot it you've yet to be this accurate the matthews creed available at bucks and bulls archery in stevens point wisconsin why does your phone work so good here and mine can't even find service that's because i went to sopa cellular in plover wisconsin sopa cellular is conveniently located in the village right next to menards stop in and check out why they have the most affordable unlimited text and data smartphone plans they offer lg samsung htc motorola and many other top quality android market devices sopa cellular has all your accessories for any style of phone with hundreds to choose from so they are sure to have the deal you're looking for Make Sopa Cellular your Element Mobile Headquarters and stop down to 1813 Park Avenue in Plover today. Tired of buying a new vacuum every three to four years? Well, we found your solution at Barber's Shop, your vacuum cleaner and sewing machine headquarters. 
When I decided to invest in a vacuum, I went to Barbershop. And while you're here, take advantage of their scissor and knife sharpening services. With the knowledge to help you find that vacuum or sewing machine you're looking for, why go anywhere but 2400 Church Street in Stevens Point to Barbershop? You need parts? We have as complete of a supply of vacuum and sewing machine parts as you could find. So before you invest in a vacuum, see us, because we sell the best and fix the rest. Barbershop, 2400 Church Street, Stevens Point. Real Deal Mineral. Deer eat it gone. Real Deal Mineral is the real deal. Other minerals on the market contain up to 70% salt. Real Deal has less than 7% salt and more of the minerals deer need to grow bigger horns. And bigger horns mean bigger trophies. I tried Real Deal Mineral for the first time and I had over a thousand pictures on my trail cameras in less than a week. Real Deal Mineral. Available here at Bucks and Bulls Archery, Stevens Point or realdealmineral.com. Don't forget to mark your calendar, July 27th, one year anniversary grand opening here at Bucks and Bulls Archery, 3272 Church Street, new location, new owner. We have a lot of door prizes to give out. We're giving away a free craze mission bowl, bunch of door prizes, we got food, refreshments. Melissa Bachman will be here from Winchester Deadly Passion TV. She's a Matthews professional hunter. Don't forget, mark that date, July 27th, Come on in to 3272 Church Street, Stevens Point. Check us out, maybe win a door prize. All right, now it's time for one of our more exciting segments here on Weekly Outdoor Plus. It's where we get to keep our fans connected with the show. Don't forget, you can send in your pictures to weeklyoutdoorplus at live.com or link them up to us on Facebook to get in this segment of our show. Each week as Sopa Cellular makes it extremely easy for you to capture these photos and then send and share them around effortlessly. First up this week, we have our good friend Carter having fun at Bucks and Bowls with Gary and Grandpa Mike. And next up, we have nine-year-old Casey Roth shooting bowl for the very first time with Gary. And here's an impressive 7.3 pound walleye by Mark Pazorski caught in Ely, Minnesota. And here's my Uncle Ron with his 9.8 pound walleye. He also caught Neely, Minnesota. And the next few pictures come from Tommy and his family, some relatives we have in South Carolina fishing off the Kiwa Island. First up is Tommy with a fine tooth shark he pulled in all on his own. And here's one his brother Timmy had to give him a hand with. A 300 pound, 7 foot nurse shark. Nice catch, boys. And last but not least, the newest addition to the Hints family and the Weekly Outdoor Plus crew, my little man, Grant Hints, enjoying a new shirt he got from Grandpa Gary. So stop on down to Sopa Cellular today and check out all their great deals. And stay tuned for more Weekly Outdoor Plus action. If you're looking for a vacuum that is going to perform year in and year out, Look no further. SIBO is the best of the best. Pick up your SIBO today at Barber Shop, 2400 Church Street, Stevens Point. Why does your phone work so good here and mine can't even find service? That's because I went to Sopa Cellular in Plover, Wisconsin. Sopa Cellular is conveniently located in the village right next to Menards. Stop in and check out why they have the most affordable unlimited text and data smartphone plans. They offer LG, Samsung, HTC, Motorola, and many other top quality Android market devices. Sopa Cellular has all your accessories for any style of phone with hundreds to choose from. So they are sure to have the deal you're looking for. Make Sopa Cellular your Element Mobile Headquarters and stop down to 1813 Park Avenue in Plover today. Hi, welcome to Frank's Hardware in Stevens Point, Wisconsin. Proud of family owned and operated since the 1940s. Conveniently located on Highway 10, Frank's Hardware has all your general hardware needs and we specialize in a wide variety of products. Meaning all of your paint, lawn and garden, plumbing, electrical, and many more of those household needs. Not only do we have a new one, but we can show you how to fix what you already have. Did you know Frank's Hardware also offers a wide variety of services? So stop on down to Frank's Hardware today. We don't just have great products, but we have great service. ProWash, commercial and residential mobile power washing service will get it clean. Whether it's a house, garage, roof, patio, or deck, 
Pro Wash uses all hot water, putting them above the rest. They also use all biodegradable chemicals to get out any mold or rotting that's ruining your home. So take a large step towards protecting one of your biggest investments and have the cleanest house on the block. Call 715-341-7852 for an estimate today and ask for the Pro at Pro Wash. 715-341-7852. Hi, it's Chef Thad again at Michelle's. Um, we've filleted the walleye that Scott has provided for me. I've got one fillet here and the cheeks from that, uh, the larger of the two walleye I cleaned today. I'm going to be showing you how to do what we call a poor man's lobster. This is a dish you can do over an open fire, you can do it over a propane cooker, or you can do it over a stove top. We've done it for years on our fishing trips to Canada. It's a good dish to serve maybe day three when you've had enough of the traditional fried fish. It's lighter, it's healthier, um, and it's very simple to do. We're gonna grab a stock pot, something this size. We're only making a small batch today. Um, the more people, the more fish, therefore the bigger the pot to use. Everything's gonna be cooked in this pot. I'm going to put four cups of water into the pot. I'm going to take chicken base, Chicken base is, is basically chicken fat with chicken bullion. I'd imagine you could use uh, bullion cubes or, or George Washington bullion powder or just buy chicken base at the grocery store. We're gonna put in a significant amount. We're gonna put in two tablespoons of the chicken base. We're also gonna be using a spice called Bull Bay Seasoning. Uh, the name tells a little bit about one of the main ingredients in it, and that's bay leaves, of which we're gonna add additional bay leaves, three. The Old Bay seasoning has, has things like paprika, garlic, onion powder, things of that nature, and dried up and crushed bay leaves. We're going to put in two tablespoons of the Old Bay seasoning. So you can see we have a lot of salt, right? We put a, only, only two cups of water and quite a bit of salt coming from the chicken bouillon and the Old Bay seasoning. We're also going to add some lemons to the water, whole quartered up lemons. We'll add maybe four of them for this small of water. And we're going to get this water on the stove top. Now we're going to take our water and put it on the stove top. Once again, the water has our old base seasoning, it has lemons, it has bay leaves, it has chicken base and water. We're going to let that come to a boil. And when it comes to a boil, we're going to add some other ingredients to it. We're going to add a carrot. Once again, depending on how much you have in fish and how many people you need to feed, that's all you, what you base your, the amount of vegetables that you're going to use on. Um, in this case, since we have one filet we're cooking, I'm going to take two carrots and chop them up. And I like to put them in a bite-sized size that maybe you would find in stew. I'm going to take these carrots, since that's the, this vegetable, along with our red potato, are going to take the longest to cook in the water. They're going to be the first to go in. So I'm going to take the carrots and I'm going to put them in the boiling water. The other ingredient we're going to use is a red potato, a new potato. It can be a, an A or a B size, it doesn't matter. I take just a little bit of the skin off. I peel a collar off the side like that. Then I'm going to, to, to increase the, the efficiency of its cooking, I'm going to cut it into quarters. And I'm going to take the potatoes. I would say, general rule, one potato per person. Um, if you're a if you want more than that, you certainly can do it. Okay. Our last vegetable that we're going to use, Scott, is going to be an onion. I like to eat the onion from the fish boil. Some people might use it just for flavor. If you used it just for flavor, you would not have to skin it. Some of the best flavors of an onion come from the, the root ends and the skin that's on it. Uh, matter of fact, that's how we make many of our stocks with whole onions and things like that, um, unpeeled. I have peeled it because I know we're going to eat it. I'm going to quarter this as well. Our water has been boiling and our potatoes have been cooking for some five to eight minutes at a brisk boil. Now it's about time to add the onion. Hello everyone, I have my sidekick here, Cade Stankowski. He was um, one of my favorite young chefs. He's got a good smile and a good heart. We're going to have him chunk up the walleye for our fish boil. So Cade's going to come over here. He's, gonna, he's got clean hands. He's going to use that smaller fillet knife and we're going to take this walleye fillet that we had prepped earlier and we're going to cut it into chunks that are maybe this long. So Kate, drive your knife right through there. Okay. Okay. What I'd like to see you do when you're using a knife with your opposite hand, I would like to see you turn your fingers like that when you grab something so that you're less apt to cut your other hand. So when you grab it, bend your knuckles like that and then push that knife straight down through like that. So cut it up into chunks that are maybe one or two inches wide. Okay. All the, that's great. Keep going, that's perfect. 
and you can use those as two separate chunks and go one, two, three. So they'll be like chunks of lobster meat, thus the name, the poor man's lobster. Okay. Keep going, you're doing really well, Kate. See, that way if the knife slips, you're less apt to slice through your fingertip. See, our water has come is, is coming back to a boil now. Our vegetables have all been cooked. Our carrots are soft. We can drive a spoon through them. Our potatoes are soft, yet a little firm, so they'll hold their shape. Those are all cooked through. We're going to get this. When that happens, the water is going to come to another boil. And when it does, we're going to be putting in these fish fillets. Um, you can see it's starting to turn now, so I'm going to go ahead and drop in the chunked up fish that Chef Cade did with me, including the two cheeks. We're going to put them right into the boiling water. When this water comes to another boil, we will turn the heat off and cover the pan and let it rest for maybe two or three minutes. And, and the fish is done. It only takes minutes for this fish to cook. You're poaching it in this wonderful stock. We'll come back to this in just a minute. What we've done now, one of the condiments that I like to put on top of poor man's lobster is garlic butter. I melted a quarter of a stick of whole butter. I'm gonna put in some fresh minced garlic, maybe a quarter of a teaspoon. And we're just gonna let that simmer without burning the garlic. You never wanna heat garlic up to the point where it turns brown on you. It changes its flavor completely. We just want it to melt into the butter and kind of spread its flavors out through that. Our water here next to the garlic butter is now coming to a brisker boil. That's good. I have a feeling we'll be ready to serve this dish in just a couple of minutes. We'll be removing the fish and vegetables from the stock, drizzling the garlic butter over the top, and presenting it to our friends and family. Um, show them how, how wonderful we can cook that wonder, that Wisconsin lobster called a walleye. As you can see, we've come to a brisk boil. I'm going to shut down the heat all the way off. I'm going to cover and let it steep for just a few minutes. We're going to take what I recommend doing is, is draining this into a colander. You also could scoop things out with a slotted spoon, but I, I think it presents better if we, we just pour it all off slowly into a colander. We're going to reserve some of the broth. So what I'll do is I'll have my, whatever I'm going to serve it in, I'll take some of the broth. So it has such wonderful flavor. And actually in the bush when we're up and when we're fishing as a, as a group, We'll, sometimes we'll save all the broth and we'll make soup out of it the next day. We'll take some egg noodles, but we're not doing that today. So I have a little bit of broth. I'm going to pour off the rest of the, the product, all cooked off. Now I'm going to take this product, and now that it's drained a little bit, there's fish in there, maybe there's some things that we don't want. Maybe we don't want the bay leaves. I personally think they offer wonderful color. Um, you can see we have the potatoes. The onions, the walleye, just wonderful, beautiful flaked fish. I mean, you, you, you just can't beat it. There's nothing like it in the world. I, just so they can, we can show off our chefing, we're going to put a bay leaf in it like that. And we're going to take this dish, we're going to take our garlic butter that we have on the stove top, we're going to drizzle a little bit of the garlic butter right over the pan, like so and bon appetit. Thank you for watching this week's episode of Weekly Outdoor Plus presented by Bucks and Bulls Archery in Stevens Point, Wisconsin. Don't forget to check us out online at facebook.com slash weeklyoutdoorplus. See you next week.